All right, let us review the uh, facts that we have about the Zaporizhia nuclear plant. Now the two sides of the Russia-Ukraine war are launching accusations against each other. So the Russian side has been withdrawing its personnel uh, progressively from the Zaporizhia nuclear plant. They have been slowing down the use of the reactors. And they have also counseled to the uh, Ukrainian employees working there to evacuate and to potentially go to Crimea. They said preferably Crimea. Um, interesting. And at the same time, we have publications like Russia Today on the Russian side today saying, according to the advisor of the general director of nuclear plant operations agency Rosen. Nur go atom, Ukraine is planning to strike the Zaporizhzhia nuclear plant overnight on July 5th with a missile containing a nuclear dirty bomb warhead. Holy shit. <laughs> a nuclear dirty bomb warhead. Okay. Uh, I've been, uh, I've been, uh, confused about dirty bombs before because I, I confuse salted bomb with dirty bomb. So a salted bomb is a nuclear explosion that spreads, that is designed to have more radioactive material spread on the area so that it's unusable. A dirty bomb is a bomb that is similar to a salty bomb, but not nuclear. It's, it's, an, it's a regular explosive that's meant to spread and vaporize radioactive material uh, on a certain area. Now, a nuclear dirty bomb warhead, I don't know what that would mean. That would mean a mix of a salty bomb and a dirty bomb. That would be technically uh, whatever it is. I mean, maybe a tactical nuke that spreads the, uh, the radioactive material of the nuclear power plant itself. Anyways, whatever that is. There is the claim on the Russian side that the Ukrainians are getting ready to uh, destroy the Zaporizhzhia nuclear plant and that this would be made for the purpose of getting NATO more involved. And we've had for, for more, many months, maybe more than a year, we've had Zelensky say again and again, oh my God, the Russians will blow up a nuclear plant that makes it a European matter because there can be radioactive material that would be pushed by the wind toward Europe. He's been insisting again and again that Europe has to intervene if it comes down to this. And he's been doing it so much that I have to conclude at this point that Zelensky wants to see uh, a nuclear plant be blown up on Ukraine. I mean, he's been... He's been tying the idea of European intervention, NATO intervention, with uh, such an event. And is it possible that he would want it so much that he's willing to cause it? I have to say that the story on the Russian side is absolutely in line with the facts. It makes sense. Rodita said, says, you don't need a tactical nuke, just nuclear waste will ruin an area for years until you clean it up. Yes, but that's if you can get a big enough explosion. Because dirty bombs, that is conventional explosives spreading radioactive material, have been tested by Israel because Israel had fears historically that they would uh, be the victim of a terrorist dirty bomb. Uh, it turns out that it doesn't spread radioactive material that much, that it's very local, it's very temporary, and they, they concluded, following their test, as I cited from Wikipedia, uh, they concluded that the bombs reportedly did not pose significant danger beyond their psychological effect. So dirty bombs have not been successful at covering areas in the many miles or, or you know, making areas truly uh, unusable. However, a dirty bomb in a nuclear plant, that remains to be seen. Would there be a spread of the nuclear waste or would there be a crumbling in and potentially there, there wouldn't be that much spread? I don't know. I tend to believe that it's probably worse in our head than it is in reality. Uh, 
because the Chernobyl event, that was an event in which there was a, a reaction of fission that they lost control of that was constantly feeding in the air. I don't know that a single explosion like this would be as bad as Chernobyl. I think it might actually be less worse than Chernobyl. Anyways, so on the Ukraine side, they are saying it's the Russians. They have installed, at this point, they have installed uh, explosives. They then left the plant, and so they're getting ready to blow them up. This story is plausible, but I don't see it being supported by any facts. I don't see the intelligence. I don't know. How is it that you would know this? Do you, do you have aerial photos of the explosives in the plants? Are they visible? How do you know? Uh, and, and they publish so much propaganda on the Ukraine side. Look at this. Uh, propaganda, as it happens by a trans soldier, it seems. General Zaluzhny's thoughts regarding Russian use of nuclear weapons are especially important, as credible reports state that the Kremlin is bringing their workers back to Russia from the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, while those remaining are told to blame Ukraine in case of any nuclear catastrophe. It is clear to the world that any problems at the ZNPP are the sole fault of the Russian terrorist, and Russia's attempts to proactively pass blame is a transparent and foolish manipulation of the truth. The AFU is prepared for all outcomes in Zaporizhia and reminds everyone to act calm and follow the proper procedures that have been set in place for any eventuality at the power plant. General Zalu all right, well, at least we know what's the LGBT position on all this. Uh, so the, U the, the Russians are liars, and we should not believe it. And no matter what's about to happen at the Zaporizhia air, uh, nuclear plant, follow the instructions. But all of this was predicted and speculated upon five, six days ago by Jack Posobiec and, and discussed on Twitter, and there were other people, even from June 20, that's two weeks ago, laying out this whole story. So here we have a thread of Jack Posobiec saying, breaking Article 5 for Ukraine, suddenly presented by Lindsey Graham in the event of a destroyed nuclear facility. So you have Lindsey Graham 10 days ago saying, oh, well, in the case of the destruction of a nuclear facility, we could intervene in this conflict on the side of Ukraine. That could be a justification. That is suspect. You were talking about this 10 days ago and now it's happening? That is suspect. Well, I don't know if it's happening, but at least a discussion is that it will happen. And then Ray McGovern in, on June 20, that's two weeks ago, Victoria Newland is running amok on Ukraine, according to Cy Hirsch, who is the journalist that releases uh, things that are compromising for the Ukraine side. He's kind of a, he's been pointed to as a as a Russian propagandist, but he's been a serious journalist putting out uh, an interesting stories in this conflict. As counteroffensive fails, will she authorize an attack on Zaporizhia nuclear plant to blame it on Russia? Is that why Kiev spy chief today accused Russia of mining cooling pond there? So this has been in the preparation for two weeks. You had people speculating that Ukraine was about to strike it following uh, Reuters publishing Ukraine spy chief accuses Russia of mining cooling pond at Zaporizhia nuclear plant. So there was already preparation, whether it's one side or the other, there was already preparation for this event to happen very soon. And they, they were already acting and launching accusations at each other for two weeks. And in fact, the, the, the general theory of Zelensky has been for many months that Russia will do it. Russia will do it. Uh, someone was, Juan Luis Tostado was saying, Ukraine is losing the war like South Vietnam 
A Gulf of Tonkin moment is necessary to put NATO soldiers in Ukraine. Look at this, the story of the Gulf of Tonkin incident, which was used as a justification to initiate the aggression against Vietnam by America. The U.S. entered the Vietnam, Vietnam War when the government and its media reported an attack on U.S. ships. And as America always does, they always ground their wars in lies. And it wasn't an exception. Originally, U.S. military claims blamed North Vietnam for the confrontation and the ostensible but in fact imaginary incident on August 4th. Later investigation revealed that the second attack never happened. And the first attack was merely Vietnam defending itself because the United States were sending ships aggressively in their direction. So the second attack was a lie to justify the invasion of Vietnam. The official American claim is that it was based mostly on erroneously interpreted communications intercepts, but the NSA, a subsidiary of the U.S. Defense Department, deliberately skewed intelligence to create the impression that an attack had been carried out. So again and again in American history, we have this example of there's a bunch of people in the secret services and the, the security agencies. They make up intelligence. They feed this to the president. They feed this to the officials. And they get America involved in a war based on lies. And I'm afraid that it could very well happen again with this Ukraine-Russia event. Doubting Thomas says, Jeff, while we are on the topic of false flags, there was a lot of talk of people freezing to death last winter in Germany due to the Nord Stream pipeline explosion. Was there ever any reporting of any victims in Germany? Well, establishing a causal route between... Uh, between energy issues and death is complicated because people die on average in the winter. And <clears throat> it's probably partly because of the cold, partly because of other things. But I would not expect uh, much death to have happened because of this, because the, the supply of uh, energy to Germany was replaced. I remember that uh, the U.S. Uh, was sending boats, I believe. So, so we were criticizing this in our news analysis. I was like, okay, so you, you destroyed the economic opportunity of having low-cost energy, and you're selling the alternative. Of course, of course you are. <laughs>